Hello everybody and welcome back to Screen Stars. I'm reviewing another horror movie today and it is the 2017 movie called Slumber that stars Maggie Q, has Sylvester McCoy who you may well know as a previous Doctor Who and it also has uh, William Hope in this movie who uh, you will recognise from the movie Aliens who I think, was it Gorman? I think it was Gorman he played in Aliens and this is a film very similar to a couple of movies I've seen this year, the Don't Sleep and particularly Dead Awake. And it is a horror movie that focuses on the phenomenon known as sleep paralysis. Um, something that someone I know actually suffers from and they talk about it quite often with me. And it seems to be a subject certainly quite recently of a lot of horror movies and it has been obviously previously as well in regards to the Nightmare on Elm Street films you know they're playing around with dreams and horror it, if done right these kind of horror movies can work particularly well and I have to say after watching this I thought this was in a lot of ways quite an effective horror movie that's not to say it's not without faults many are and this is no exception but this film essentially focuses on um, there is a family um, who lost their one of their children at some point fairly recently. They've got a son and a daughter, and the son is suffer suffering terribly from sleep paralysis. Um, and, but also the rest of the family are suffering from sleepwalking and all this kind of stuff. So while they're walking around the house doing this, that, and the other, the boy is suffering from sleep paralysis. But in actual fact, um, it's actually the uh, some kind of demon that is preying on him it's distracting the rest of the family so it can feed off this child's energy and maggie q plays um a doctor at like a sleep center and this family are booked into the sleep center her and william hope both play doctors and they end up observing the family one night it all goes a bit awry the father ends up getting arrested and essentially the family are put at even more risk. Um, Maggie Q's character, who has a history of sleep paralysis, paralysis in regards to a member of her family when she was young, realizes that she's made a terrible mistake eventually and seeks to try and help this family um, to try and figure out what is going on. That's kind of the story that we get here with this movie. Like I say, it's quite an effective movie. This movie, uh, at times, really does build up some very, very good tension. And it is genuinely frightening at times. Um, but like I say, it doesn't come without its issues. It comes with its usual dumb decisions in movies like this. Things like, for example, as a family, if you know you are walking around sleepwalking and doing dangerous stuff. I mean, at one point, the daughter is chopping the heads off. Um, her cuddly toys with garden shears and the wife is playing around with a blender while she's asleep all very dangerous things you would suggest <laughs> if you know that this has happened once number one you'd get them garden shears well away from the house and you'd lock everything up that was potentially dangerous like that and you would certainly bin the blender I'm sure but they don't they just leave them out so as you can imagine these things don't lead anywhere good in a movie like this so decisions like that just bother me because it's not reality um, there was another one that bothered me as well the fact that this family had booked in to go in this sleep center and the idea is they are observed all night by Maggie Q's character and William Hope's character the two doctors at one point William Hope pops out because another patient's gone wandering off down the corridors and at this point Maggie Q decides to go and get coffees for them both. Now, hang on a minute. Your job is to observe them sleeping. So while someone's opt out to go and get someone who's wandered off, you wouldn't leave them unobserved to go and get coffee. And lo and behold, when she does that, that's when it all starts getting creepy in the room and she misses it all. It's face palm moment and it's dumb decisions like that that just scream out to me. It's just bad storytelling and it's just done for storytelling purposes. It's not. It doesn't help with the reality of the movie and that frustrated me. 
Um, the second act of the movie was struggled a little bit in a sense of it struggled to know how to tell the story to keep it moving forward. It kind of dragged a bit. But the first act and the final act was pretty good, I thought. But quite effective, pretty scary. Sylvester, Sylvester McCoy played the wonderful, creepy old guy really well, <laughs> who has all the answers. Um, and I suffered from this when he was young. Um, so, where it does have a lot of cliches, this movie. Um, it, I think it tells the story quite well at times. Um, it did scare me at times. I did, I did feel tension, especially when, you know, the kids were involved and stuff. You were really on on board with that horror aspect of it, um, and it was okay. Uh, was it better than the Dead Awake that I saw? Probably. I, it probably was. I thought the Dead Awake one got a bit too silly at times and just wasn't overly effective, but it was okay. I think this one probably is a little bit better than Dead Awake. Um, the acting overall is pretty good throughout. There's nobody shoddy as an actor. Even the child actors do particularly well. Um, and it's got a decent budget behind it. So um, this is worth a watch, I would say. If you like horror movies like this, um, you know, sleep, move, high nightmare type horror movies, then I think you'll get a lot out of this um, if you can get by some of the errors or dumb things.